Hello, welcome to the Invention Studio soldering training. Uh, my name is Parker, and I'll be walking you through uh, our soldering training today. Um, first step, what you're going to want to do is collect the components you need for the test. So you need to c collect a protoboard, a 330 ohm resistor, an LED, and wire that you can get from this rack right here. Your next step is to turn on the soldering iron. You'll turn on the main unit with the power switch at the back. And once the main unit has turned on, you can enable the soldering iron you wish to use by pressing both of the buttons on the corresponding side. If you forget these steps, there's a nice poster on the back wall that helps walk you through it. Once the soldering iron has been turned on, you want to tin the tip of the soldering iron. Tinning the tip helps extend the tool life and makes the solder joints you will make with the iron um, a bit more consistent and better joints. So how to tin the tip is you tear off a piece of solder here, melt a small amount of solder on the end of the iron, and rub it in the steel wool until there is a nice coating along the end of the iron. So your next step is going to be to get some wire from the wire rack in the center. using the wire strippers, you can cut it and strip the wire. Uh, both ends of the wire need to be stripped. So you can place, this is 22 gauge wire, so it goes in the 22 gauge slot. You can pull it off and strip the ends. You'll do this two times for two pieces of wire. Awesome. So, two wires, both ends stripped. When you begin soldering your protoboard, if you would like to use one of these vice grips and alligator clamps to hold your board steady and hold your components on the board, um, you can just clamp in the protoboard or whatever you're trying to solder right here and hold any component that you don't want to fall through with an alligator clip. So the next step is to solder the resistor to your board. So pay close attention to the protoboard you select. Some of them have rails of connected terminals. You want to make sure that when you solder the resistor in, it's bridging two rails that are not already connected. So proper soldering technique involves touching both the component you're trying to solder and the pad on the protoboard you're trying to solder it to with the iron to keep them both hot. Because if both of them are not hot, the solder will only stick to one and you'll get something called a cold joint, which is bad and will eventually fail. You also want to make sure that when you insert the resistor, you're inserting it so that you can solder to the metal pads on the protoboard. If you insert the other way, you will not be able to solder it correctly. All right, so the next step, once the resistor has been soldered, is to solder the LED. So pay attention to the different lengths of legs on the LED. The longer, length, the longer leg is the positive end, the shorter leg is the negative end of the LED. This is important when we connect it to our power supply later, because current will only flow through an LED in one direction. You also want to place one leg of the LED near one of the legs of the resistor, if you have a protoboard with rails like mine, uh, make sure it is on the same rail because you want an electrical connection. If it's not, make sure it's close so you can bridge the gap and make a connection. So once the LED has been soldered, now it's time to solder our two strands of wire to either end of the circuit. So you want one end on the remaining leg of the LED, one wire on the remaining leg of the resistor. So now, it's time to, once again, tin our soldering iron. So put a little bit more solder on the end, rub into the steel wool, get a nice coating, and turn it off. You turn it off by doing the same button press you used to turn on the iron. Next, you want to get two jumper cables and connect them to the power supply. Positive and negative of output one is what I'm using. 
turn on the power supply, display limit, reduce this to 3.3 volts, and when you hit output one on, it will put 3.3 volt, 3 .3 volts on the end of these jumper cables. So turn off the output and connect it to your circuit, paying attention to the polarity you put the LED in. The wire leading to the longer leg is where the positive end goes, and the negative end goes on the shorter leg of the LED, like so. Then when you turn on the power supply, your LED should light up. So that means we've passed our test. Turn off the power supply and disconnect the jumper cables. All right, so our next step is to disassemble our circuit and clean up our protoboard. So there are three methods you can use to remove solder from a protoboard. The first is with a solder sucker. So you want to turn on your iron again. Tin the tip. And heat up a glob of the solder that you want to remove, place this near it, and suck it off. This works better with larger globs of solder that are left on the board, like around one of your components. So, can do again. The next method is the solder wick. So the solder wick is this copper braid here. So if you place it on an area where there's solder, place your iron on top of it to melt the solder, it will be absorbed into the wick. And when you remove the wick, it will take away the solder for you. The final method is with this separate soldering iron here, the desoldering tweezers. So, you turn it on the same way you turn on an iron, and with this, you can grab a component, and it will heat up the solder, and you can just either push or pull it out of the board, just like so. So using any combination of these three methods, remove all of the components from your board and clean up any globs of solder that are left behind. So once you've finished desoldering your proto board, turn off the soldering iron by pressing both buttons. and show your cleaned off protoboard to a PI to be checked off for passing the test.